Um, and joining us is the author, best-selling books, two of them, Obesity Code and The Diabetes Code. He is a nephrologist and functional medicine advocate. I don't know what either of those things are, but he's here to talk with us today. <laughs> Let me welcome Dr. Jason Fung. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Great to be here. Good to see you. Um, I've, I've been sharing with the audience, with the family here that I've started a few uh, was it last week, week and a half ago, intermittent fasting. I think I'm on day 10. And I thought it would be easy because I fasted my whole, you know, adult life for several reasons. Maybe some of it wasn't too healthy and when I was in my 20s. But, you know, I've done three day fast, four day fast. I know that I'm built for a famine, so I don't fast too long. And my body will be like, uh, uh-uh, we're going to hold on to everything. And then when it's over, I'm like, well, you know, I put it all back on. But the intermittent fasting I, I explored as a lifestyle I'm I'm trying to see if I can make it into a lifestyle. But then I realized, Dr. Fung, I eat all throughout the day. I just be snacking and eating. It was a handful of almonds here, bag of bag of skinny pop there, maybe a tangerine. Like it's just constant grazing. And the last two days have been super tough. So Mm -hmm. what is intermittent fasting? How does it work? And why does it work? Yeah, so that's a great question. So intermittent fasting. So remember that fasting is really just any period of time where you're not eating. So if you eat, then your body is going to store calories. So what happens is you eat, you're taking in calories, your body wants to store those calories. So you store it either as sugar or as fat, body fat. And uh, when you don't eat, that's when your body sort of gets that signal and says, okay, well, I don't have energy coming in, but you still need energy for your brain and your liver and your heart and so on. So it's going to take the energy that's stored away as sugar or as fat, and it's going to use it, right? And our body has the ability to store it. So that's really, uh, you know, just a natural uh, sort of cycle, right? So you're going to eat, you're going to store calories, but then at the same time, you have to have a period where you don't eat and you're going to use those calories, right? We have that ability. There's nothing abnormal about it. Otherwise you die in your sleep like every single night because that's, you know, this is just the way we're built. So what happened uh, in the past was that people would have a period of fasting every day, right? You're trying to balance your feeding and your fasting. So if you think about the sort of 70s, what people would do is they'd eat three meals a day and breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you'd eat breakfast at like 8 a.m. and you'd have dinner at like 6 p.m. And you didn't eat after that. So you had from 6 p.m. until 8 a.m. about a 14 hour period of time where you're not eating. That's your fasting period. And you did this every single night without even thinking about it, right? It was just a habit. That's just the way we ate. And that's why you have this word breakfast. That's the meal that breaks your fast. So there's nothing cruel and unusual about (laughs) fasting. It's just part of a normal cycle of life. What happened is that sometime in the 90s, people started to think that you needed to eat all the time and that it was healthy for you. Now, this was sort of contrary to everything that we had thought before that, because if you think about fasting, people have used it. It's literally the oldest dietary intervention in the book. You know, we have, uh, you know, the Bible will mention it. Religious texts will mention it. The ancient Greeks mentioned it. So we know people have been doing it for thousands of years. And the context had always been that it's something healthy. So if you think about how people thought about fasting, it was something like purification or, you know, detoxification or something good for your health, not something bad for your health. And that sort of changed up in the 70s, in the 90s. People started to say, well, you should constantly graze throughout the day. So this was not based on science. This was just based on somebody's opinion and probably helped along with a lot of uh, money from the drug, from the food companies, right? Um, Because if you think about what happened in the 70s, people would say, like, if you wanted an after school snack, your mom would say, no, you're going to ruin your dinner. And if you wanted a a bedtime snack, she would say, no, you should eat more at dinner, right? It wasn't that she was trying to limit what you ate at dinner time. It's just that she's clearly defining this is the period to eat this is the period not to eat, right? So, uh, you know, it, there, there was nothing unhealthy about it. So the, the, the point is that sometime uh, without sort of any science, people just started saying, oh, you should eat 10 times a day. You should constantly eat. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's like breakfast is a meal, 
that's about it, right? It, if you eat it, great. If you don't eat it, your body will figure it out, right? Like our bodies are, are amazing things. It's, it's not like you have to keep, you know, shoving a muffin right. in your mouth to stay healthy. So that, that was the whole thing that it, it changed sometimes. So you're saying intermittent fasting is nothing new. We've been doing it. Nothing new. It's been the last long 30 years, the, the marketing people and the food companies yeah. have rewired our brains to do something that is antithetical to our actual health and what's natural. Exactly. So snacking had always been considered sort of this luxury, like, you know, a snack was just something that, uh, you know, it's an extra, it's a bonus, right? And then it became something that everybody had to eat every single day, right? And it's like, okay, well, you know, we survived thousands of years without snacking, but it, it, it sort of got entrenched in, like, if you look at the schools, for example, you know, people, you'll get a note. Like, oh, our, your son is going, I, I usually get these notes. Your son is going on a trip. Please send two snacks with him. I'm like, mm-hmm. why is he not eating lunch? Am I not feeding him dinner? Is that why he needs two snacks? I'm like, <laughs> what is the reason? Because, you know, I grew up in the seventies. I survived fine with those snacks, right? <laughs> My body's going to figure it out. Uh, you have stores of energy. If you think about it, if you have, you know, body fat, then you have thousands and thousands and thousands of calories sitting on your body. So a pound of fat is 3,500 calories. So most of us have at least 100 and 200,000 calories of energy sitting on our body. (laughs) Damn it. Why do I have to think about it like that? Okay. So Dr. Fung, because we got limited time, I want to just bang in. How how does it work? Okay. So I'm I'm doing 17-7. Because the 16, uh, six, I don't do uh, 16, eight, I think it is. I don't do sixes and I'm weird. So it's like a, a, a OCD thing. So I was like, I'm going to do 17. That 17 has been really tough. And I'm thinking about scaling it back to 16. What is happening over those 17 hours of not eating? And what does it constitute? Is it like if I take Super Beats Heart Chews, does that constitute eating? What is, is it eating nothing? Is it drinking only water? Because I, I like yeah, my tea. Technically, it's water only, but a lot of things like tea, green tea, you know, coffee, they don't really count in that they're not going to change. So our bodies, uh, what what happens is when you eat food, so any food basically is going to trigger a response that tells your body, hey, food's coming in, now's the time to store calories, right? So either calories are either going in or they're coming out, right? When you start eating, it's going to come in. Now, if you only eat a little bit, like just a tiny bit of something, right? Then it's it's a very small signal. If you eat a full meal, it's the full signal that, hey, store calories. So that's the 16 hours. All you're, all you're letting your body do is give it the time to switch over into this from the fed state, which is, you know, the hormones which tell your body to store energy, to have to flip and stay, you know, use the energy. It's, it's no different than, for example... If you go to Costco and you buy a lot of groceries, you put in the fridge, right? Once your fridge is full, then you stop going to Costco and you take the the food out to eat, right? That's basically all it is. You're putting it in storage, you're taking it out. Same thing with body fat. When you're eating, you're putting the food, the the inner food energy in. When you're not eating, you're taking it out. So the, the fasting is just a way to allow your body to sort of use the energy that has been stored there. The reason it's hard is that uh, our culture has been to encourage us to eat all the time. So whereas in the 70s, it was very easy for people to do it, it becomes more difficult because now you see that there's food everywhere, anywhere you want to go, you know, office buildings. You know, I've, I've read I've read that um, fasting for 16, 17 hours also helps your cells to reset or to clean. It's like cleaning out your the junk in your body, allowing the junk in your body to be swept out. Is that is that factual? Yeah, yeah exactly. And, um, you know, in terms of the that's uh, often people refer to this process called autophagy, which is this idea that when you fast, you're going to break down not just, uh, you know, you're going to use glucose, which is good, right? To get your blood sugars down. You're going to use body fat, which is good if you're, if you have body fat to lose. Uh, and then the other thing is that there's a period of time where you're breaking down protein. And that sounds really bad. People say, oh, you're going to, you know, burn muscle, but that's not it. Protein, there's a lot of excess protein and you're going to, you know, have this period of autophagy where you're actually going to break down protein. 
And the reason that's good is that any process um, where you won't, you break down old stuff and replace it with new stuff is going to make you healthier. So it's actually a process of rejuvenation because at the same time as you're breaking down protein, you're actually elevating growth hormone so that when you do eat, you will replace those proteins with new proteins. So you're basically taking out the old stuff and then you will replace it, whatever is necessary with the new stuff. Sort of like if you were to renovate your bathroom, first thing you got to do is throw out the old tub and the old <laughs> toilet, right? You can't do it without breaking down. That's the first process of rejuvenation. So that's why it's important for the fasting. That's why it had always been considered something that's so healthy because you're going to get rid of the old stuff. 